30 years, the General Wine Company, international wine shippers, has been sourcing brilliant wines and spirits from around the world and delivering them right to your door. Whether you are a wine lover, restaurant, hotel, or having a party or corporate event, the General Wine Company has the experience, the highest level of excellent customer service, and the range to offer you something special, whatever the budget or occasion. www.thegeneralwine.co.uk Good morning and welcome to Winescape TV. I, as always, am your host, Dick Totally, and we're very excited and pleased and honoured to have with us Neil from the Bellingham Wine Estates from the Franchuk Valley in South Africa. Now, welcome to you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Um, now, we've got to be a bit, a bit gentle with Neil today because, of course, he's literally just come straight from the airport, uh, fresh off a flight from South Africa. So we're going to be treat him very, very gently and sort of nurture <laughs> him in. Um, but obviously, I wanted to get a, an opportunity because we've got these, you know, have these lovely wines that are sponsors of the General Wine Company. Um, uh, supply and uh, I want to get a little bit more of, of if you could a history of you know Bellingham and sort of uh, where it all came from and sort of when since you joined um, anything like that really yeah for sure um, Bellingham is the third oldest estate at this stage in South Africa um, uh, we were founded in 1693 so with any big brand like that, it's actually got a rich history. I mean, we were the first ones to make Shiraz in South Africa, the oh, first okay. ones to do a dry white wine while everybody was still drinking semi sweets, um, first to do a rose. So, a rich um, a history and also part of our philosophy then being innovation and trying to be new at, at things first. Um, so, to do all the daring type of things, and that's why we've got ranges as well for, for everybody anything from entry level all the way up to, to the connoisseur. Because, I mean, you're now quite a, sort of a, bit, a bit of a maverick, aren't you, within the industry? I wouldn't say I'm the maverick. Um, I think I'm trying to represent the, the maverick, the Bernard Podlashuk, the previous owner. But, yeah, all the weird, wacky, wonderful things does tend to, to go through my hands. I mean, it's part of my... F my way of doing um, a wine, I don't call myself a winemaker, I mm -hmm. call myself rather a fermentation controller. So, because you're really just setting the conditions right and let nature do its job. But you need to make sure what the conditions are and and then, yeah, applying them constantly and trying to keep life simple. I mean, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good product that we've got. Um, uh, but, yeah, you don't want to overcomplicate things. No, sure. I mean, do you think, I mean with the sort of the state of, the, of, of where we are currently in the sort of the South African wine industry, is it is it easy to be a, to be a an innovator so sort of to, to try new things it's it's easy to be an innovator i think south africa really our borders opened only in the late 90s um so we've still got the whole world as a as an oyster even though we've been making wine for 350 years mm. we've only really started learning how to make wine i think with the last 20 25 years I mean, it's one thing doing the same thing for 300 years over and over because you haven't got a customer to actually give the wine to to taste. Now suddenly the borders are open, we can export to wherever we want to, and we start getting feedback and responding to that feedback, you really start fine-tuning the, the product. I think sometimes we're too innovative and we bring varieties to the market um, uh, that nobody has ever heard of. and. Just because we think it's a good variety, it doesn't necessarily mean that other people is also going to think that. So it's, and that's why I'm here. I mean, to, to support products like, mm -hmm. for instance, the Vionia or Ruzan or Grenache Blanc. I believe in the, <coughs> sorry, I believe in the products. Um, I believe they've got a, a sound home in South Africa. And it, it's about giving something extra, not just being another Sauvignon Blanc or another Chardonnay on the market. Yeah, I think as I say, that, I mean, the, the, the market is pretty saturated with that. I mean, it goes seems to go in trends, sort of back into the 80s, 90s. Chardonnay from Australia was the big thing, and then Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand um, is slightly it's started to peter out. So mm -hmm. some of the more exciting things, like you know, the, the new Voigniers and the, these pressings you have here, are uh, there is a, a, a severe uh, a hunger, a thirst, should I say, for them, which is great. <laughs> and I know that uh, our sponsors, the General Wine Company, um, had a, had their 30th anniversary annual uh, Peterville Wine Festival last Saturday, which we attended, which a great day and uh, your wines uh, sort of took up a whole table and uh, so these new wines have certainly uh, hit the mark and were very very uh, very popular with all the people coming around so looking for something a little bit a little bit more interesting and different um, but in terms of sort of the you do sort of talk, talk about opening up markets how important has the UK market been for you guys has that been sort of a, a, a focus or is that you know because you've got Europe as well no for sure we've got Europe um, uh, the UK market has always been a, a very strong focus it's always been the first market for us to, to enter I think also one of the easier markets initially to enter because of no language barriers, um, a rich history between South Africa and, and the UK. So it will stay a very important market. Um, uh, still, most of South African producers, the largest portion of their exports will be coming to the UK. Um, uh, we are definitely looking at other 
part as well of the world and we've classified or us as a company has classified it now as a as a maintenance market where we know there's not going to be huge growth mm -hmm. but we need to maintain every single listing that we've got and still grow the business there's obviously some great opportunities in the far east and america and canada as well where we need to start looking at, at exploiting those type of opportunities and see where we can grow the business armor in in future but the uk will always be the number one market for for dgb or the, the holding company sure. of Bellingham. Um, we've opened up our own offices here a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and that, that on its own tells you, you know, we haven't got any offices in other parts of the world that we need to, to service this market and, and do it extremely well. And the best way we can do it is by having our own people on the ground, people from our own payroll to, mm -hmm. to come and <laughs> wander around to make sure everything happens the way it should. So can, so can sort of DGB, sort of, I guess it's called DGB Europe, I mean, can they use the office here in the UK as a satellite to then to then sort of you know, exploit other markets in they'll, Europe and beyond? They'll, they'll be able to. Um, uh, part of our strategy is to employ key people in certain markets. So we've got a person, for instance, in Russia, we've got a person in, in Holland, a person in Germany. Um, uh, but they then work very closely with importers and distributors, whereas here we've got our own importing and distribution company mm -hmm. that, that we've set up, which is slightly different. And yes, you'll be able to use it as a satellite company, I'm sure. That's definitely not my call. My call is to, to put the right quality at the right price in the bottle. Absolutely. So, and that's that's, that's my focus, um, but yeah, there's there's endless opportunities. Excellent. Now, of course, you know, while while you're over in sort of the northern hemisphere, uh, you're uh, taking uh, taking a sort of position, a stand, should I say, at the London International Wine Fair. Is that still because there's been a lot of negative press regarding uh, that wine, specifically wine fair, against things like pro wine in Dusseldorf? Is it uh, still important for you guys? Do you think it's something you'll continue to support? It, it is very important, and and we need to support it. Um, uh, purely for the reasons that I've just told you, the UK being an important market. Um, uh, there's, there has been maybe bad press, or it's always been compared to Provine. Provine has been growing in the last couple of years. I think it's easier sometimes for, for Provine customers or customers to get to Provine. Um, uh, it's maybe even a little bit cheaper. But yes, so we've been doing the wine trade fair for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I've seen the, a slight decline in people exhibiting. But for us, it is very important, and that's why us as winemakers come over, um, is to support the sales staff that we've got on the ground here and to actually come and see what happens in the marketplace. I mean, yeah. That's why I'm on a little whirlwind tour of, of the UK. <laughs> I mean, last night in Scotland, today, yeah, tomorrow in Bristol, and then off again to America, uh, off again to, to the Netherlands. But just to try and get a feel for, for what has happened since the last time.